just hit the record button here and get rolling. Um, so what uh, what we like to do with these sessions, first of all, I just want to make sure everybody understands. This is these sessions are intended to be interactive. So um, find the chat in your go to training control panel, and um, if you have any questions or you see anything that you want repeated or anything like that, please hit the chat and ask. I'll check it periodically throughout the uh, throughout the session, and uh, and definitely try and answer any questions that that you may have. So um, with that said. Um, these these sessions are a little different than a lot of software demos you may have seen. We um, try to do these about once a month, and the idea is to um, basically um, um, is basically to to uh, do a quick demo of probably about an hour, hour and fifteen minutes of a simple object, but try to stuff as many tips and tricks into it as possible. Um, these are are shall I say lightly rehearsed, but not you know fully worked out. the The idea is to to show you the process of building something from scratch. And I try to put myself in the same position that you would be in if somebody just handed you a sketch and said, "Build this." And so um, uh, we frequently go down blind alleys. Uh, I'll be completely candid about the fact that I make plenty of mistakes along the way, but my 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 response to that is I try to make the mistakes so that you don't have to. And we talk about um, what happened and how to get out of it, which is a, a really um, difficult thing to try and work through when you're on your own. And <clears throat> excuse me, and you don't have any guidance. So the the goal of this is to is to talk through it, uh, work out how to solve this modeling problem together, um, talk about any problems that arise along the way and how to get out of them. And uh, and all that kind of stuff. So, um, so, so let's go ahead and, and and jump into this. And the the idea behind this, and the way I always start these, is I'm just going to delete this for now, um, so that we can start from the beginning. Is I always start with the picture command, and the picture command brings up uh, a desktop browser that allows us to pick an image, lay it down in the scene, and then place it any way that we wanted to. And if we were working in the perspective view, you could see that this actually is uh, is an object within Rhino. It has object properties and, and things that you can do to it. And the idea is that if we want to place this in the scene, we can drag it around with Gumball. We can move it. We can rotate it. We can copy it. We can do all the things that we need to do with it. Um, you know, from a from a modeling perspective, just treating it just like it was a normal modeling object. So, I don't like to have my images right at the origin because if you were building a symmetrical model, this image would actually bisect the model, and I don't like that. So, what I typically do is I drag it back in space so that it's outside of the modeling window, and I can model here. But if I go to the front view, uh, so I like to place this in a, a little bit back in the modeling window, and then stick it. Uh, but in the front view, you can see that it still it still appears as you would want it to appear. Now, the the one thing about this in, in its current state, if I tried to model over this now, um, the the drawing would disappear because of the contrast of the image. And what so that makes it difficult to kind of work with this. So I'm going to pick the image. I'm going to go up here to the to the panel layers. And I'm going to switch to the properties panel using the little gear icon up here. And what this is going to allow me to do is to go down and and uh, set the set the render material which is here and <clears throat> the rendering material you can see is already assigned Let's see a little paint tube up there and if I roll down here I can set the transparency of this which I'm going to roll this up somewhere around 85 percent and you can see that the that that drops the transparency of this object and it allows you to be able to see the curve in a little bit more detail I'm going to switch back to the inspector panels. I'm going to go to my layers and I'm going to assign this right clicking. I'm just going to move this object to this layer. I'm going to rename this layer by double clicking. And then I'm going to lock this layer so that I can't select it in the modeling window when I'm trying to work. Okay? So that's the setup for getting images in. It's really simple, it's really effective. You can have as many images as you want. 
if I had a front view, side view, top view, bottom view, I would do top image, bottom image, front image, left image, right image, all on individual layers because I could turn them on or off using the visibility icons um, just simply by, by going over here. And so it keeps your modeling window really uncluttered. If I only need the front view, I just leave the front view on and I turn the other ones off. If I needed the side view, I would turn that one on and turn the other ones off and all that kind of stuff. All right. That makes sense so far? Let me just check the chat and make sure everybody's with me still. <clears throat> all right. So, so as we're, as we're rolling through this, now that I have my image in, I can start trying to determine like how to, how to work with this. Now, if I wanted to put dimensions on this, I could, I would just come up here and I would, I would draw a line that says this thing is supposed to be 10 inches long. In fact, let's do that. Let's just scale it. Now I'm going to unlock this. I'm going to draw a line from here. I'm going to just type 10 and hit enter. And that's going to give me a, a line 10 units long. And you can see that my image is short, right? So if this is 10 inches or 10 centimeters or whatever it is we're working and I'm working in inches because I'm in the US, um, I can scale this image <clears throat> from here. And then I know really with, you know, with a lot of certainty that this image is now exactly 10 inches long. All right. So then I would lock it. And I just delete this line. I just use this guide. So I know this is 10 inches long and I know that I'm modeling in, in the correct amount of units here. All right. Any questions so far? All right. So <clears throat> we have this in, we have this laid out. We have it set up the way that we want it set up. And now we're going to start just laying out the basic curves of this thing. And I, the whole idea with curves is I want to make my curves as simple as possible and then edit them later. And in this case, I'm actually gonna just use nudge, which is my arrow keys. And I'm gonna draw my lines in like this. And I'm gonna pull these curves farther than I think they need to go, which allows me to get really light with these points. And then edit using the arrow keys and gumball to get exactly what I want. All right, so there's the top line, there's the bottom line. I've overdrawn these a little bit, and you'll see why later. Come up here, over somewhere here, and then pull back to that. Pull the points up. And again, a, a common mistake for, for people who are just learning is they don't pull the points far enough. Pull the points farther than you think they need to go. You will put less points in your curve and have better curves because of it. Being a curve nerd really helps when you're doing this kind of stuff. So there's a secondary line in here, and there's a trick that I like when I'm doing things that have family of shape. I'm just going to copy and paste this line. And then I'm going to change the gumball using the gumball relocate command. I'm gonna snap it to here, and then I'm gonna scale it. And when I scale this, you can see that it keeps these points in positional continuity, right? They're still stacked on top of each other, but it gives me the option to then pull these points, and it keeps it all kind of relating, right? I like that it's a very simple edit. I just have to pull these just a tiny little bit and I get a very nice family of shape kind of thing, right? I have another curve here. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna copy and paste. I'm gonna slide this down just a little bit like that. And I want these points to all converge. So I'm gonna pick this point here and I'm gonna slide it up just a little bit. I might even just use a gumball snap and put it at the end there so that that line kind of converges. And then same thing here. This is kind of just basic design stuff. And again, you know, every, if you've seen any of my demos, you know, I'm really, I'm really concerned about making sure that, that we're designing things 
we're not just copying things. We don't want to just be a, 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 a CAD monkey or a keyboard jockey or whatever you want to call it. <clears throat> I really want I really want this to be a design tool. I want you to learn Rhino at a level where you can use it to be a designer. I want you to see things in 3D. I want you to be able to design things in 3D. And I want you to be able to use this in a way that becomes super effective and works for you as a design tool, right? Uh, again, with this curve, I'm just copying and pasting. I don't like that edit, I'm gonna pull this one instead. And you can see that all of your curves are starting to relate to each other. I'm gonna pull this point just a tad because I want that curve to open up just a little bit at the bottom, like that. All right, so we've got that. And then I'm gonna draw one extra curve through here to make my opening. And then I need a second curve down here to define where the blade is gonna be. And that one, I'm just gonna tap Alt or Option and copy this curve and just drag it straight up. So I want that one to be parallel. So this is gonna be our blade. This is gonna be the split for our handle, all that kind of stuff. So we're getting there, right? And I'm, you'll notice that I'm not worrying too much about trims at this point. I'm just, I just wanna get my curves right. Because if you have good curves, you'll have a good model. If you have bad curves, you can have a bad model. There's just no, no other way around it. <clears throat> I'm going to copy this by dragging and tap Alt or Option. And then lay it in here like that. All right, so I've got all my curves laid out. So let's clean these up a little bit. Um, I'm going to leave this one long and this one long. But I do want to trim... These. So let's use the isolate command and let's isolate just those curves for now because those are the ones that we're going to focus on. I'm going to trim these two off using, I'm just typing the commands because it's super fast. We can use the icons over here, but I just find the keyboard to be really fast. And we need to start talking about like what is the shape of this thing. So the shape of this, I'm imagining if, I don't know if you can see this really light sketch down here, but I was kind of thinking it was going to have a fairly oval handle and then it was just going to kind of blend into the blade. All right. So I'm going to just do that with a, I'm going to just trim these so that they're even. Again, I'm just typing the command. I have hotkeys for this stuff, but I don't want to use hotkeys when I do demos because it's rude. And then I've got this opening here. I'm going to use a a diameter ellipse. I'm going to snap to the top, snap to the bottom, and then I'm just going to pull this shape of the handle. And I want the handle to be something kind of like this. Now, the one thing I, I want to talk about in this model is, is we're, we're using these curves. We're going to build a surface that's kind of approximate. And then when the surface is done, we're going to basically ignore the curves and then do some point editing on the surface itself, which gets us beyond what the normal tools are are able to are able to give us. So let's split this in half because we don't need both halves of it. And I'm gonna just run the split command and the cutting objects are gonna be these. And then I'm just gonna get rid of half of this. So we've just got half a model, right? That's all we need. And we've got one, two, three, four curves, right? So we're set up to do something simple like a two rail sweep. And the two rail sweep kind of lives up here. Sweep two rails. This is a rail, this is a rail. That's a profile or cross section. That's a profile or cross section. We're going to just run this. And you'll see that we get a, let me do this in shaded view. Let's go to shaded view and let's run that again. Maybe sweep two rails again. Rail, rail, profile, profile. And you can see that we get this kind of shape. See that bulge in the center, kind of like a pregnant fish? We don't want that, so we're going to use the maintain height. And you'll see that that tucks it right in there. And this gives us a surface that we can totally work with, but it's as far as refinement is concerned, it's kind of like it's got too many points down here, and I don't really like how that's lined up. So let's rebuild it with six and with five control points. Let's just do that. 
and then let's go ahead and sweep it. And we're just going to use positional continuity. We don't need to worry about continuity right now, but let's sweep it. And you'll see that we get, I just want to make sure that that actually did rebuild to five. So it looked like it didn't change anything. So let's just do it again. There we go. I'm going to rebuild with five. All right, that'll work. So let's sweep that. And then let's look at our point structure. If I use the, um, if I turn the points on down here, you can see that we have some, some pretty organized points here. We've got one, two, three, four, five points in this direction, which is what I wanted, right? And the cool thing about that is these two points are gonna make up the tangency across the center line these two points are going to make it the tangency across the center line. So if I were to mirror this thing right now around here, you could see that we could we could go ahead and 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 match this up and get some tangency across the center line. Now, <clears throat> the the thing about so like so let's say we use the match surf command and I matched this surface, oops, let's do it the other way. We match this surface to this surface, and we average them. Look what happens. That pregnant fish comes back, and we don't want that. And there's no way to really control it. So match surf is not necessarily a good choice here. So I'm going to cancel that. But I do want tangency back here, and I want tangency kind of across the top of this thing. But I, I don't, but it needs to get <clears throat> sharp here. It kind of needs to go from positional to tangency back here. And you can see that it's very sharp along the top right now. So how do we manage that? Well, first thing I'm going to do is, is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kill my history for now. Um, and I'm going to use the history purge command. because so I want to make sure that um, history is not screwing me up along the way. And I'm going to turn the points on for both of these surfaces. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my tangency happen manually. And the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to go to the front view. I'm going to go into a wireframe. And I'm going to take these points and I'm going to scale them to zero in this direction and zero in this direction, which is going to stack everything up on top of each other, and then I'm going to move it back to where it was before. And what that does is this lines up the points in a straight line. See this straight line? Anytime you have your zero point and your one point, and the zero point and the one point, if these three points are lined up, that's tangent. Okay, so we're not tangent here, so let's grab these. And I can even do this in perspective view. I'm going to scale these to zero in this direction. I'm going to scale these to zero in this direction. Now, I would not scale them to zero in this direction because that would stack them on top of each other, and that's not what I want. But I can do this down the line, and what that does is I'm just going through and using Gumball to line my points up. And as I do this down the blade, I can determine where that tangency starts and stops. And I'm going to bring it down the blade here and I've got some I've got some editing to do because you can see that it's pulling my lines but that's okay I want this to be tangent all the way across the top of this blade and then I want it to kind of tighten up along here so I'm gonna just do a few more of these Maybe one more set, because I do want it to fade out. I do want it to fade. I don't want it to be, I want it to get sharp at some point. So let's go here and then let's fix this mess that we made. And we're just going to do that with Gumball. I'm just going to pull these up, back where I wanted it. 
And so now we're getting something that the surfacing tools weren't giving us. Right? We're getting a little bit more out of it than we had originally. I'm just going to pull this up. Now, you could also snap these. You could snap these points to this curve if you wanted to, like that. And that makes it a little bit more um, accurate, like this. And then we can take these points and move them closer. What I want to do is I want to just create a little fall off. And I'm going to just do this by just wrangling these points up a little bit like that. Maybe even, I could even draw a curve through here if I wanted to. In fact, let's do that. Let's draw a curve about, let's do something like, this and let's take these guys and let's snap them to here and this allows us to just have a guide to line this stuff up it's super easy and then we know that they're lined up we know that they're falling off the way we want it to fall off and i'm using the i'm using the seaplane waffle here it's probably not its real name but that's what i call it And you can see that our shape changed a little bit. So let's let's see how close we can get back to our original shape. May have to pull a little bit off of this, but that's okay. And I'm going to call that close enough. I'm I'm going to say that that's good. So let's take a look and see what we've got right now. If we go to shaded view. So you can see back here we've got tangency, and then it fades out, and then it gets sharp in the front. And we may even want to continue down this line. I may even want this to be tangent all the way across the top. And if we did that, then it would simply be a matter of coming in here, going back to wireframe, and just moving this to here. Ooh, gotta get both of them. Move that to there. Back to there. And I'm using the C plane because what I don't want them to do is snap together. I want them to I want them to be lined up. Across the top. And this is going to change the shape on our bottom a little bit, but that's okay, we can deal with it. See how that changed a little bit in there? So we can take these guys, and we can pull that shape back where we wanted it to. Something like that. That's close enough. And then I'll just come through here and I'll clean this up so that these are nice and lined up. This seems like a lot of work, but once we get it done, we're going to have we're going to be in a position where the rest of the model is going to kind of build itself, which is nice. I just want to get rid of any big jags or anything like that in the surface. All right, and I could go through and 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 draw the curve through there, which is probably a good idea. Let's just do it so that we've got a guide for how this these points are going to line up. And so this is my this is my guide curve. So I'm just going to take these. I'm not even going to snap them. I'm just going to do it eyeball. Like this, just just so that they're close and a little cleaner. Just gives you an, a visual guide so that you kind of know what you're doing. And you'll see that it just, just cleans things up a little bit. 
something like that. All right, so see, now our points are kind of lined up in a nice arc. So let's take a look and see what we've got now. There's shaded view. So now what we can do, and the cool thing about this, is we can control the tangency. Because these are lined up, we can control tangency with gumball. Watch this. You want a fatter handle back here, or a skinnier handle. You want that radius to be tighter or fatter. I want it to be a little fatter at the back, like that. And then I want it to fade out a little bit. So let's go to the top view. I want it to fade out. So I gotta put them in this view first. Go to the top view. And then I can scale it out. And then I can control that taper, see that? And I may want this to be just a little fatter. I may want these guys to be a little fatter. And as I do that, the tangency is maintained because all these guys are lined up, right? And see, we get a really beautiful, beautiful shape. See how our highlights are nice and tracking and looking good. So I'm gonna just give this a little bit more thickness. So I don't want it to be a blade on the top. I want it to have just a little flat that follows all the way through. And I can do these a couple at a time but I just kind of like doing them one at a time so I can keep an eye on it. And the thing that I want to keep an eye on is the dotted line in between them, the indication of the, the control polygon cage that goes around this stuff. Oops, I made a second edit in there that I didn't want to do. All right, everybody still with me? So we've got our shape, right? We're going to do the same thing on the bottom, and I, I'll spare you... I'll spare you too much trouble here. We're just going to do this quickly. Zero and zero. We're close here, but not exact. We don't want to get too crazy, but... Let's go to wireframe so I make sure I'm picking the right ones. So you can see that we're getting tangency here as well. And again, the same thing, I can control that tangency. By how far apart or how close those points are together. Do I want it to be more rounded at the bottom or do I want it to be flatter at the bottom? I think I want it to be more rounded. So see how we're designing? We're designing in 3D. We're not, we're not, being CAD monkeys, we're not, we're not uh, copying. And so, the next thing I want to do is I actually want to, I want to open this up a little bit. I want this to have a flat at the back. So I'm actually going to pick all of the points in this direction using the cell U command, and then I'm going to deselect these up here, because I don't want those to move. Oops, looks like I got the wrong set. I want these. There we go. So I want to pull the, the very edge ones apart, and then I'm going to command drag these to deselect them. And then I'm actually going to scale these apart a little bit. And you can actually see that, that um, the, the model, because these points are coincident, I can't pull them apart because there's no handle. So what do I do? Well, what I'm going to have to do is delete half the model, which is not a big deal. Sell you again, go to the front view, command drag these. Oops, I wanted that one. Shift drag to add that one. Go back to the perspective view, and then I'm going to just pull these just to tiny bit. So I just want a little flat on the back of that. And then I can manage how this blends from the flat into the, the, the handle. And I think I want the flat to start lower. So I'm going to just snap these back to our original centerline curve. 
And then you can see it starts to open up a little bit, but I don't want it to happen. I want it to happen super gradually. So I'm just going to go through and just place these. Oops, it's the wrong one. Got to make sure you grab the right point. There we go. So that's a subtle little transition there. So now that we've got that all set up, we can mirror again around the center line. And we've got the basis for our knife all set up here. If I join these two, I'll get, and I show my edges, you'll see that <clears throat> the naked edges, it's joined at the top. It's mostly joined at the bottom. That's okay, we're gonna deal with that. The top is really kind of what I'm focused on. I don't care about this edge down here because we're actually gonna do something different with that. And what I may do is because this isn't exactly, exactly joined at the bottom, I may actually I may actually put myself in a position where I can just do this with uh, do this with a surface across the bottom, or I can look at the points and see are they on top of each other or something like that. In fact, let's do that. Let's explode this for right now. Oops. I'm going to hide my curves for the time being. And then let's look at the points and just see where stuff is not exactly lined up. So if these two, those look like those are lined up. That one's lined up. That one is. That one is. That one is. I'm going to join. I'm going to line these up. And then it starts to it starts to peel apart down here, which is okay because that's that's kind of what I was looking for. And it looks like these are crossed, which is not what we wanted. So let's uncross those. There we go. We don't want the lines crossing over each other. If they cross over each other, that'll cause a problem. So let's join it up again and just see how we're done, how we're doing. And we'll show our edges again. And it's still showing that this is open, but that's okay. We're going to deal with that later. All right. So let's start. Let's start getting into the fun stuff now. We did a lot of sculpting on this handle, and let's let's start let's start putting this together now. So what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to actually get this bottom joined up because that's fairly that's fairly important and i'm going to do that <clears throat> with uh i'm going to do that with a surface split so i'm going to explode this for now and then i'm going to split the surface if i right click on here and i use an iso curve i'm going to click on this surface and i'm going to come down here and really close to the bottom i'm going to put just a little split in that and then I'm going to delete this. I'm going to mirror it. I don't want to do the same thing over twice. Around zero. And you'll see that it has a little split all the way down the bottom. That's fine, because what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use a blend surface from here to here. And I'm going to set it to position. That's going to be good enough for what we're doing. And then I'm going to join this up again. And what that should give us now, so if I show the edges again, and if you haven't used this command before, get, get used to using it because it will show you exactly where your model is not joined anymore. So see that pink went away now? So now we've only got an opening at the back and an opening at the bottom. And the opening at the bottom is fine because we're going to deal with that later. So let's fix the opening at the back. And the opening at the back, if I bring our curves back, we already have that solved. I'm going to just do that with a simple surface. I'm going to drag the gumball and I'm going to hold down shift 
on the little extruder ball and it's going to make a surface. Everybody see that? If I drag the ball, it extrudes to the one side. If I hold down shift, it goes to both. And I'm just going to take these two objects and trim. And then I'm going to join. Okay. Front view. Now we're going to sail. This is going to go quickly now because we've got we've got all the stuff that we need to really fly now. So this curve right here and this curve right here, I'm going to split this. I'm going to split this object with this curve. Actually, I'm going to split it with these two curves. Let me trim these. Split that like this. So join this and this. And then I want to make sure that this curve actually... Oops, I joined it to the wrong one. Wrong one. I want it to be this one and this one. See what I said about I make a mistake so you don't have to? I'm going to trim that and that. Stop it. There we go. This one and this one. Join those. And then I want to make sure that this goes all the way out the end of the model. And I believe it does. We'll see. If the split fails, then we'll just pull it out a little farther. So let's split this object using this curve. And it did work. So this is our handle. This is going to be our wood or our teak or whatever it is. And then the next thing we have to do is we have to put together this whole situation. So let's trim these. Also, do that. So I've got this curve and this curve and this curve. And I'm going to split this model again. And I could trim the hole out and stuff, but split, if I, I can do it all with split. So this is the object to split, and I'm going to split it with this and this and this. And I'll just delete these. That's my hole. And then let's take a look at what we've got. So it's really coming together. We're, we're pretty close. This section right here has a little reveal in it, right? I want this, I want this to peel away and have a little reveal. So let's isolate this. And let's look at what we got. Make sure I get both of these. So I'm going to delete one because I'm going to modify with this one and then we'll just copy it over. But let's turn the points on and take a look at it. So right now if I turn the points on for the trim surface, you can see it carries all of the trim information of the original surface. And that's not entirely useful for an editing point of view. So what we're going to do is use the shrink trim surface command. And I'm going to shrink this surface and you can see that it pulls the points down to a little bit more manageable state, right? Just gets rid of the ones that we don't need. So I'm gonna get rid of everything. I'm gonna select all of the points in this surface. And actually it looks like I've got, yeah, that's fine. So I'm gonna pull all of these points. I'm gonna use the lasso command. I don't know if you've used this before, but it allows you to The feedback on this is white, so you can't see it across the bar on the screen. But what it allows you to do is drag around a selection of points that's not necessarily even. And so I'm going to command shift. I don't want the second point in each one of this. So I'm going to command click the second point in each one of these surfaces. And I'm going to do this in wireframe so we can make sure we've got what we need. I do want that one. So I'm going to leave the two at the bottom alone. And I'm going to go to the front view, sorry, right view. And I'm going to set the gumball 
you know, gumball relocate to zero. And then I'm gonna just scale these just a tiny bit, just the slightest little bit. And you can see that what I'm doing is pulling this towards the center line just a hair. And what that'll do when we bring the model back is that will give us this very slight reveal, which is what I wanted. But it will fade out to the bottom because we left the two points at the bottom alone. So let's copy this over. And then let's look at our edges. I'm going to hide the curves for right now. Sorry, I used the hotkey there. The, the command was cell curve, S-E-L-C-R-V, and then hide. So let's turn our, let's turn our, control, our uh, edges back on. So we'll use show edges again. We're getting close. Oops, sorry. And so we can see where our edges are. And this, I'm going to just join this back in. I don't need to worry about that because it's a separate surface. I can shift command click it and I can sub object select these. In version six, you can assign materials to sub objects, which is nice. But I need to be able to split these surfaces up a little bit so that I can start working with them, right? Because I've got a point here, but I don't have anything here. So I'm going to use a tool that lives down here. And under edge tools, it's called split edge. And I'm going to split this edge here. Do the same thing over here. Oops. Let's pick the right thing, shall we? Split edge. I'm going to split. Using a snap, I can locate that. And what that allows me to do now is I can loft between this surface and this surface and create a little flat there. Same thing here. I could have mirrored it, but it was easy enough to do that. Join this up. And you can see that those edges are no longer pink. We're going to do the same thing up here. I'm going to split edge and I'm just going to right click and pick it from the menu here. And I'm going to use a snap, and a snap, and then I'm going to loft. Again, I can right click and pick this out of the, it's a nice efficiency on the Mac side, that right click menu. I like that. Join that. You can see our pink is starting to disappear, which is what we want. So <clears throat> I'm going to loft again. this to here. I'm going to join it. And then we've got a little bit of a little bit of thinking to do about how we want to handle this. So I need to I need to get this side and this side put together, but I've got three edges down here. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to duplicate this edge. Sorry, I got to swing around here and find it. I'm going to duplicate this edge and turn it into a single curve. So I'm going to come over here to the edge tools and I'm going to duplicate an edge and I'm going to duplicate that, that, and that. That makes it a curve and I'm going to join those into one curve. I'm then going to do a two rail sweep using that curve. And I know that at the end of the day, that is going to join up with that. See how the pink went away? I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to duplicate edge. This one, this one, this one. Join. And then I'm going to sweep two rails. Not that. 
and that. Join that up. So now we've got, if I shade this, you can see what we've got. We've got all this thing built. It's all cleaned up. We've got our transitions built in. It's all kind of nice and highlighty and beautiful. But the last thing we need to do is we need to put the blade on this thing. And as it sits right now, we've got a flat at the back, which is not really going to do us what we want. That's not really how knives work. So let's bring our curves back. And let's take this curve. And I'm going to split the model because I don't want to get rid of this. I could extract this and do all this stuff, but let's just split it. Split this object with this curve. And then what I can do is I can explode this part. I can delete this and that, but I'm going to keep this. And then I'm going to do the same thing down here, delete this. And then go to perspective view. And then I'm going to just draw my blade. And I'm going to do that just with a simple line from here back to our center point. And then what I can do is I can sweep this do one rail sweep. And as it sits right now, if I tried to sweep this right now because of this step, it would, it would screw up. And I'll show you what it'll do. And I'll show you how to fix it. So if I were to sweep along this rail, see how it screws up? It doesn't know what to do. So let's sweep it along this rail first. Actually, that's not doing what we want it to do either. So let's go back to the front view and let's split this curve. Split using a point. And let's just split this curve. Let's eyeball it right about there. Now I can do a two rail sweep, which gives us a lot more control. And I actually don't like where, I don't like how this curve is, is flowing right now, but we'll deal with that later. I'm not concerned about it. So let's do a two rail sweep, or a sweep two rails from here to here. We'll do that. And then I'm going to take this curve. Actually, I'm just going to draw a curve from here to here. And that's going to have a little step in it. And I'm going to just decide to be OK with that. So I'm going to loft from here to here. And something got a little screwy here. So I'm going to shift command click that and delete it. And then I'm just going to redo this law. I'm not entirely sure why that got screwed up, but something was screwed up there. I might have had tangents turned on or something like that, but fix that. Join this all up. And then we'll sweep the blade for the rest of the line. Sweep that. There's our two rails. We'll use the poly surface edge. And then I'm going to come all the way up. Make sure I've got the right one. To this surface edge. All the way to there. And that's our blade. All right. So let's join all this up. And now you can see that <clears throat> if I add all of this, the only open places I have right now are where the blade is. So let's shift command click. I already joined it in, but I just want to show you, you can sub object select and mirror an object. close enough to it. There we go. Come on, give me the surface. There we go. Mirror this. Uh, 
down zero. See how it allowed me to, to mirror that even though it was a sub object selection. It's kind of a nice little trick. And then I have to decide, do I like this little blade hook at the back or do I want to do I want to trim it off? And if I want to trim it off, <clears throat> I'll simply just draw a curve. There's a number of different ways I could do this, but for simplicity's sake, I'm just going to draw a curve and trim this. And then the last thing I need to do, I can just run the cap command and it'll fill that little hole there. All right. I'm going to hide my curves, cell curve, and voila, there's our object. We've got really beautiful highlights, we've got nice fading tangencies, but let's save this. I'm just going to save this. I haven't given this a name yet, so I'm going to save it. And I'm just going to throw it on my desktop for now. And then let's look at what we can do to make this a little bit more interesting. And I'm going to switch this to rendered mode now. And I'm going to hide my image because I don't need it. And you can see that we get a really nice kind of ambient occlusion kind of render on this thing so far. But let's, let's have some fun. Let's throw some materials in here. So I'm going to go, I'm going to make a new material. I'm going to import from the material library. I'm going to go to the wood and let's use, I don't know, any of these. So like a teak or something or a, or a uh, ebony. That would be cool. Let's use ebony. Even though there's some environmental impacts of doing so. We'll use polished ebony. It's computer ebony, so. I'm going to shift command click and drag these and then I'm going to right click on this and assign to objects. And you can see that even though that this is part of the model, right, this is all one piece, by shift command clicking I can sub object select those and then put, put that material on there. So let's make a new material from the material library. I'm going to go get, I'm going to go get a, a metal now and that moves under metal and let's do a polished stainless throw that in here and let's shift command drag this which gets all of that stuff right I also want the blade so let's get that too So I want this I want this center section to have a different material so that we're going to right click and assign that. And that gives that. And then I'm going to duplicate this material if I right click on this. I'm going to duplicate it. And I'm going to change the name of this to satin stainless steel. And then I'm going to just drag its polish down a little bit so that it's not white is shiny. And I'm also going to change the color to be a little darker. Something like that. And then I'm going to shift command drag the center section, right click, assign to object, and then we've got a little bit different material for the blade than we do for that. Now, I could go through and throw a fillet on here. You know, I probably would do that if I was really going to model this. But this is to a point now, because this is a solid object, if I run cell open poly surface, nothing lights up. So that means that this is a closed object. So I could throw this through a printer and see how it feels in my hand. I could send this to a CAD. Um, product like SOLIDWORKS or Pro-E or something like that, if I was a martyr, um, and, uh, and work and work, you know, with it from there. But, but the main thing is, you know, I can render this, I can print this, I can do whatever I want, and there's only one model because the materials 
that are assigned to this um, are sub-object assigned, and we can go from there. So the last thing that I can do here, <clears throat> and I'm just going to save this one more time. I know in the Mac this isn't necessary, but it's just it's a habit I get into. I just can't <laughs> get out of the habit. The Mac doesn't, you don't have to save that. It saves constantly, but anyway. And then the last thing I want to do is I just want to go to ray trace mode. And this is the cycles rendering engine. And we'll just do a ray trace of this. And you can see that it's kind of slow on this on this machine because the video card on this machine is a little ish. That's the one drawback on the Mac side is you're really limited to video cards. And cycles is um, CUDA enabled. So the more CUDA cores you have, the faster it goes. The GTX card that's in this machine doesn't have CUDA, so it's um, it slows down a little bit. This this render actually on my PC, I have a I have a, a monster video card on my PC, and that one um, that render actually finishes the entire render goes to a thousand samples in probably a minute and a half. This one will probably take five or six minutes because we're moving fairly slowly, but given enough time, this will render up very nicely, and you can see. How it's how it's doing its thing. So, so man, 957, 57 minutes from start to finish on this. Any questions? Anything that you saw that you were like, whoa, what was that? Anything else I can clarify for you or expand on or anything like that? This is this is these are intended to be interactive. If not, I think that's about what I have for you. And I have miraculously come in under an hour for once. Usually I bleed over a little bit, but this kind of gets you gets you started. I hope that we've introduced some ideas like, like manipulating the points, lining up points to get tangency, having fading tangencies by messing with the points, things like that. I see Mark here. Welcome, Mark. I'll see you again tomorrow. Mark is one of my students. Damien's here. Fantastic. One of these days, I'll get you to stop doing control art and illustrator. Fantastic. Oh, by the way, um, just so you know, th these are all going to be these are all recorded and we post these on Vimeo and the Vimeo page is, uh, let me, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fine, fine, fine. Is it should be Vimeo Rhino. Let's just, let me get there and find it. There we go. Rhino tutorials. I'll put this in the chat. All right, so this is where all this stuff is going to get posted. If you go here and you look at the channels, the channels are um, the channels are where the um, all of this stuff goes, and these will be in the will be in the in the in the um, getting started with Rhino right here. Okay, will be getting started with Rhino. All that stuff will be in here. This is where this is where all this stuff lives. So just so you know, there's like you know there's there's a ton of videos on here. Um, if you want to look at this is where all of the getting started stuff goes. If you click on this, it takes you to this channel, and it takes you through all of the getting started ones. Some classics in here, like Hello Gumball. This is a great one. Rhino Five for SketchUp users. It's, all the Rhino Five stuff, by the way, is is. Um, is uh, applicable to Rhino 6. So just because it says Rhino 5, don't ignore it. There's some good material in there. All right, we are going to be updating um, all of this stuff. Yeah, uh, Damien, the um, the, pat, the Mac and the PC are, are at feature parity now. As of version 6, it's the same code base. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. So that means in in uh, in the Mac side, you get you get uh, cycles, which is this ray tracer. Um, and you can see even at 120 samples right now, I don't know if you can see this on your screen or not, but it's, this is cleaned up. This image looks really good on my screen. So this is your, this is your key shot killer. It's, it's free with version six. Well, the upgrade, you have to pay for the upgrade to six, but 
um, that, uh, that comes with version six. And this is an open source rendering engine. And by the way, for version seven, um, cycles will be PBR uh, shader enabled. If you don't know what PBR materials are, it's a open source database, which means that you can go on the web and access literally tens of thousands of materials in PBR format and you'll be able to drag them right into Rhino and use them here, which will make your renders absolutely positively sing. Those materials are amazing. It's a Disney standard, if I'm, if I'm correct in my remembering. Um, Disney was the one that wrote that standard, and um, a lot of people have adopted it. Blender, uh, Maya, uh, I think, ZBrush takes them and stuff like that, but the PBR materials are really, really exciting because you'll basically be able to drag and drop materials from from thousands or hundreds of thousands of materials that are out there on the web. So, uh, anyway, hope that's hope that covers what uh, some stuff that you wanted to talk about. Uh, if you have any other questions or anything like that, let me know. If not, I will let you go. Get the video put together and posted, and. Uh, and start getting ready for next month. Excellent. All right, guys, we'll see you soon. Thank you for coming, and I will catch up with you next time. I'm Kyle Houchins, and this is Getting Started with Rhino for Mac version 6.